Hey everybody, this is Jason Samkoviak with the Traditional Bow Hunting and Wilderness Podcast, and this is a video demonstration. It's going to show you how I use the, one of the methods I use for sharpening broadheads. Been sharpening my own broadheads for over 20 years now. This setup seems to work the best. Some of the tools I use are going to be a standard, just straight up broadhead file or a mill bastard file. Uh, I, that's what I use for most of my edges uh, to get them to reshape my edges and get them started. And I do a lot of the work with that. Then this here, what this is, is this is automotive sandpaper. You get from Walmart. I like the 400 grit sandpaper. Just comes in a pack of like, uh, I think you get like five or six or eight of them in there for two bucks. And then what I've done is I've made my own little block. It's just a piece of wood. All I did was sanded it down and I used my saw, just a regular saw, and I cut a couple notches so that I could fit these clips inside there on this end and this end. And I sized them according to these pieces of fiberglass. So there are of uh, this pieces of uh, sandpaper so that they actually fit right on there and clip on perfect. So for me, this system is awesome. It's just like a whetstone, but it lets you control the grit and it works absolutely phenomenal. I've been sharpening all my knives and all my broadheads using sandpaper for many, many years and the system is impossible to beat uh, in my opinion. So I really like it. And then one of the most important things that's highly, highly overlooked by so many people is stropping. And that would be done with leather um, like I have here. This is just a piece of leather. I think I bought like a 15 foot of this from Tandy Leather many years ago. But even now I've seen they still have it on their website. And I think it's like 20 bucks or something for so many feet. You know, for more than you'll use in a lifetime. Or an old belt works. And then one thing a lot of people don't know that works excellent is your blue jeans. If you have a pair of blue jeans on, just take your thigh and or just stretch it so it's the jeans are tight on your thigh. And just work that knife or broadhead right up and down like, you, like, a, like a guy with a straight razor does. Just like this. Right against that tight jean that's on your thigh. That will work as well too. So will a leather arm guard, endless possibilities, but stropping is one of the most important. Uh, it takes that edge, it takes that burr down to nothing, and it makes it a nice, clean edge right at the edge. I mean, I don't care if you like a more of a, a rugged or a file-shaped edge or any of that kind of stuff. That's all fine and dandy, but in my opinion, stropping is what takes that, that fine edge to the point that you need it to be um, and gets them just scary, scary sharp. So I, for my knife, for broadhead, for everything, that leather strop or your blue jeans or whatever, but some sort of a way to strop it is vital important. Now there is two sides to a piece of leather usually. There's a, a smooth side and then there's a rougher side. For broadheads I like the rougher side and for my knives I just I prefer the rougher side. It does a little better job for me. Um, but those are some of the tools I use. Now this, what this is, is this is a Lansky sharpener system. It's a block that gives you 20 degree and 25 degree crosshairs here where you can set your, your uh, ceramic sticks in there like this. And hang on, let me get it. Actually, I've never used this, so this one's kind of giving me fits. Let me check this side like this, and they stick in there, and then you can run your blade straight, can hold your blade straight vertical and run both sides. And that works great. I never use them for that. Why I buy these is because they come with two medium and two fine grit ceramic rods in there and that's all I want. This block means nothing to me. I get rid of it. These are what's important and for the 13 bucks or something that it costs through like Knives Plus or 15 bucks to get one of these, you get a lot with it. So I take, and I don't even use the, the um, fine ones very often. I use these medium grit ones most of the time. And what's nice is I'll take this and I stick it right in my backpack and I can use it out there for touch-ups. Anything I need to do, I have one in my car. I keep these with me all the time. This is the majority of what I do. My quick touch up type work with is going to be one of these. So that's why I wanted to point them out in there. They're great for having in a pack. Now, as far as what I do, this broadhead here is one that I used last year and I stuck it in the dirt. I missed an animal. First animal I've ever missed in my entire life. Just kidding. But I did miss one and so this arrow ended up being stuck in the dirt and so I washed it off, cleaned it off, but it's completely dull. Will not do anything. So what I'm going to do with this to show you how is I actually take my file and I just work those edges and get that edge back. So I'm just running it like this. I'm not picky. I'm not even afraid to just do this. All I'm doing with this file is I am reshaping my blade to the angle I want. Now what I do is I use the furlu as a guide and I kind of, it's hard to show you on camera, but I kind of set that so that it's at the top of there and I lift up just a hair. That's my opinion for where I want it. So I just kind of reshape that edge and get it so it's the right angle I want so it's nice and cleaned up good. Now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a burr. I want there to be a burr to form on the other side of this. So when I do this, now I'm going to reach over and I'm going to feel this and I can feel that burr. Going this way, smooth. Going this way, 
way it picks at my skin. So I want to feel that burr. When I have it on every spot of that blade, I know that I've worked this edge that direction. Then what I'm going to do is come over to this side and I'm going to work that edge on this side the same kind of way and I want to get that burr to go back over towards the other direction. So I'm just going to keep going back and forth. Or you can go individual strokes, it's whatever works best for you. For me, I've been doing it so long, like I said, I find no difference with the file by actually going like this, because I'm not doing my fine tuning work. This is just the, uh, you know, this is shaping the edge. So I go like that, until I feel that burr, there's that burr on that side. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give a few strokes on here like this, very light, I'm gonna work that over. I wanna feel that burr on that side a little bit. I'm gonna come over to that side, I'm gonna take that burr off. Put it back on that side. I'm going to do this just a couple times. Just trying to fine tune that edge so it's close enough and good enough for what I'm looking for. Like that. And there we go. So now we got the file part of that done. And I can feel I got a slight burr still on that side. I'll bring it over just a hair more and just kind of work it a little bit. And now I'm ready to use either the ceramic rod if I want to. I can take this and use it just like I did with the file and just go ahead and run that rod the same way, just like this, to give that fine tune on that edge and clean it up and then bring that burr over. Once you feel it, bring it back on this side till you feel that burr start to form on there and it gets, a little, you want smooth going that way, rough and picky going this way, across like that so you feel it. Once you feel it, you go over to that side and work it that way. Now, what the sandpaper does is kind of replaces this. Um, for at home and how I do it is I'll take this here where I got that blade I just did that work on there I feel which side needs that burr okay it's this side first to start all that stuff out of there and then I take this and I'll set it on here I'll get my angle I set it right on the fur loop and then I'll lift it up so that I'm just at my angle and I just pull across like that and I just keep doing that just like you would a whetstone I'll just keep working it this way just like that keeping that same exact angle that I want and getting it sharp like I want it to be. Then when I'm gonna check it, I'm gonna feel, I got a burr on that side, no burr on this side. That means I'm ready to flip over. Same kind of deal, just grabbing, running that same angle, just like this, and pushing it right along that paper. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on there. And then I'm checking this side. Yep, burr's on this side now, not on that side. So I'm gonna go back and work it on this side. Now I know I've actually had a burr formed on both sides, so that means that I'm actually ready to start the fine tuning stuff and get it right down there in real slow, controlled, very light pressure and just letting it take it right down, making sure I get both sides. Now what I'm going to start looking for is evening that out. I don't want a burr to be forming anywhere. I want to kind of even it out. So right now the burr is on this side over here, so I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to just fine tune that a little bit. Then I want to check, okay, now my burr is back on this side. I'm going to bring that back. Now an important part of this, what you want to do, is once you have that done, I like to take something, a block or something, I'm using this because like I said, they're garbage to me, and just run that blade through there a few times because that way if there's any wire edge, you're going to actually take it off and knock it out of there. Now it's still got that same edge and that same sharpness, but I've got rid of any wire edge that could have been forming. Now when it comes to this dropping, what you want to do, just lay your piece of leather, I like the rough side up, lay that on whatever flat surface you got, you can even put it, if you cut it, and put it right on top of your, your sharpener, but take this and then just work that blade back and forth like this. You do not want to go against the grain and you do not want to pull across it or you'll cut your leather. So just work it like this, same angle you had you were using for your uh, sandpaper, same angle you used on the file, always keep the same angle for all this stuff like that, then I'm gonna flip over to this side and I'm gonna go this way. And I'm just making that thing, I'm, what I'm doing is polishing up the very edge on there uh, and making it, you know, just taking it down to an extremely scary shaving, razor sharp uh, edge on there. And then once you have it done and you've done a few of these, now I usually will extend this whole process about double kind of what I did for the for the stropping, uh, just to make sure I get it exactly like I want, but for showing you purposes, now what you have there is you have a razor sharp broadhead. Now if you want to test the sharpness of a broadhead, you can take something like this. I use simple rubber bands. You can shave your arm. You can do a million different things to test this. Um, but if you're not familiar with it or you want a, a good fail safe way of doing it, is to use rubber bands like this. Now here is a pack of broadheads that's brand new that I haven't even used yet. You take one of these broadheads out of here and you hold this broad or this rubber band, just kind of stretch it a little bit between your fingers is what I do like this. Now if I take that 
what I want is a broadhead that's going to cut the entire way. So if I take this and I push right up on there, you can see that it actually doesn't cut that, that rubber band. Now if you take the one we just did and you do the same kind of thing and you start it on there, as soon as you start moving, it's cutting and it cuts right through there. That's what you're looking for, is you want it to cut. Now I'm actually not quite satisfied with the sharpness of this, because I want it to cut here and it's not, it's pushing, but here it's starting to cut. Look, every little bit it moves, it's actually cutting through that rubber band and I'm barely putting pressure on it. That's a good way to test it. Now, I want it razor, I want it sharp enough that it, like I said, it goes through there where every little bit I move it, it's going to cut and cut and cut without, you know, every millimeter I move that on that rubber band with the slightest bit of pressure, it's actually cutting. So I'll come back in here and I'll strop it some more till I get to that point where I'm exactly everywhere I move and touch that, it's cutting on that blade is cutting. Oh, hang on here. Sliding my fingers. I'm losing a rubber band. There we go. Where every bit that I'm sliding that, it's actually cutting right through that rubber band like that. So that's what you want. And again, you can make it by doing this system, you can get them where they shave and a razor sharp and they'll shave hair right off your arms. Uh, it's a great system. I'm kind of running out of time. I tried to talk fast and do this real fast to show you because of uh, how long I'm allowed for YouTube videos. But uh, I hope you kind of pick up the principle of it. This is what we're looking for. I do the same system on my knives. For my knives, I use the sandpaper. It's back and forth and back and forth and then on a strop, back and forth and back and forth. And you get these things where you can cut those, you know, you'll get them where on that rubber band, for example, with my knife which I always keep good and sharp you can have that where you want it where every little inch that you push that it slices right through there see how much better that was in that broadhead because that broadhead I'm, I'm rushing on but you want that where every little inch that it, or millimeter it moves it cuts you want to test it with shaving you can shave and take hair right off your arm makes no difference I mean like I said that's the way you want to have your broadheads now the shaving part gets old because we're usually sharpening so many broadheads trying to shave with it can really uh, it'll shave you clean you'll look like a girl in no time so I recommend a rubber band trick a lot of things that people do too another way to test that is you can take your broadhead Lay it on your thumbnail on a 45 degree angle and pull it. If it bites and doesn't slide, it's good. Where this, see that's that side we shave or, sh or sharpen. This dollar side, when I set it on here, look, it, it slides. It, it won't bite on nothing. Oh, sorry, I was out of frame. But the, the dollar side will not bite. It, it slides across my finger where the sharper side actually bites and locks and you can feel it cutting into your finger. So that's another way to test them and tell as well too. So again, I'm really running out of time. I had to do this one fast, but I hope you pick something up on here. But that's the system I use to sharpen broadheads and get them scary, scary sharp. Whatever broadhead you have, it is vitally important that you keep them sharp. Buying them sharp and then using them that way, that's fine, but they're gonna get dulled out. Even from going in and out of your quiver, you're gonna dull them out. Uh, when you shoot them, you're gonna dull them. When you practice with them, you're gonna dull them. It's important that you know how to sharpen them to get them sharp and if you don't have somebody who does either teach you or sharpen them for you because we owe it to every animal to make sure our broadheads are always scary razor sharp so uh, i hope you pick something up out of this and uh, i will be back with more real soon thanks for watching and i'll talk to you in a bit bye